Hi everyone, Robbo here. You're listening to the Blues Focus podcast. Keep right on. Hi guys and welcome back to the Blues Focus podcast. Before we get into today's podcast, I'd just like to give a big shout out to our current patrons. And if you'd like to join these names in the brand new Blues Focus Hall of Fame, uh, you can join our Patreon page for just £1 a month. Perks included um, will be monthly giveaways and early access to guest pods. The link will be in the description anyway for our uh, Patreon packages. But that's enough from me. Let's get straight into today's Blues Focus podcast. Thank you for joining us as always. Hello and welcome to the Blues Focus podcast with me, your host, John Graham. Once again, many thanks for taking the time to download this pod. Uh, we've had a bit of a bit of downtime over the last week, but we're straight back into it now, thank God, uh, with uh, uh, some interesting, I think, news over the last sort of 10 days coming out of the club that we'll, we'll have a chat about before we before we start that. Carl, how are you, mate? Yeah, good. Glad to be back and glad we're back to real football. 100%. Tom, how are you, mate? Good, thank you, mate. You? I am now, yeah. I'm absolutely psyched for tonight's game. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> So yeah, let's get involved. So let's um, let's maybe go back a little bit. Um, a little bit disappointed on reflection, you know, just the result, not necessarily the performance uh, from the last game. Uh, I was, I don't, I've never ever watched anything, well, certainly not football live on Facebook. Um, so yeah, the twenty threes game. I think, I think that's a bit of context for us because it gave it gave the gaffer the opportunity to look at a few players that I think not just us. Uh, you know, from from Blues Focus, but I just think Blues fans in general, it's probably been two or three players that between us were thinking, yeah, probably didn't get a fair crack. And I was really happy to see that, uh, obviously, um, Lee Bowie has sort of said, OK, well, let's get him in the 23 straight away. Let's let's see how they, they can do and, and what, what they can offer. So, um, Carl, what, what were your what were your thoughts on on that performance? Any standouts for you? I think the main two from, I guess, what you call the senior team, I suppose, um, it's probably McGree and Said, and I think the pair of them were just fantastic. Mm. Um, McGree looked like he wanted it. He wanted the ball constantly. He was creating space. Um, his goal was fantastic. I mean, that was just a great team goal, to be fair, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. But I think just between the two of them, they just showed that not only should they be, like, banging on the door to come into the squad, they should possibly even be starting. You know, yeah. when you look at... Certainly with Peds' form over the last couple of games, you know, Seddon's got to be knocking on the door for a start there. Yeah. And I think McGree showed why, um, what what he can do when he's given the chance. Um, them two especially. I'm glad that Prieto got some minutes as well. Yeah, I know it probably wasn't his most challenging yeah. uh, game, but it's always good for him to get game time because I think we mentioned it before, you can't get that kind of minutes on a training pitch that's you know he knows what you can do on a training pitch but that's nothing against actual competition yeah um but yeah i think certainly out of them all i think mcgree and said and will be will be definitely very much in Bowie's thoughts and i think some of the kids i think um simmons was fantastic yeah you know he, he again if he's not another one at least in Bowie's mind to either feature towards the end of the season if we make it completely safe before then or, or certainly moving forward then he'd certainly need to be because he showed why he was so good and why he was at Man City and I think he was a car above the rest of the the young lads to be honest yeah and, and Tom <coughs> just, just elaborating on that I suppose two things so with Simmons um, I mean I, I don't I, I've said before you know I, I don't really didn't follow Bowyer too much at Charlton so first question would be has he got any form for, for putting in kids and I think the second question would be if you're in agreement that McGree should be in him but I know you've been pretty vocal about McGree um well pretty much all, all season and yeah. I, think <laughs> I think you've been absolutely <laughs> right to do so where does he come in if he comes in um for me it depending on the formation I think he plays I think McGree has the ability to play out wide if needs be uh, but I prefer him in a central role yeah um whether that be in sort of a, you know, in the middle too, but um, I feel like he could fare well as a deep line playmaker, but I also think he'd fare better as a more energetic going forward, like like Gary Gardner does a bit at times, yeah. um, just gets the ball forward and can run with it, yeah. do something. And I think he has that quality. Um, but overall, he's a very versatile midfielder and he has, has a lot of areas to his game. Yeah. So um, I, I suppose it's just, 
the question of where Boya wants him to fit in and yeah. how he wants to use him. Because there's definitely certain ways you can with McGree. But for me personally, I'd like to see him in a central role, getting on the ball, going forward and just seeing what he can do. Because, yeah. I mean, we saw it in that 23s game. Like, you know, he, if he picks up the ball, goes forward with it. And he, even if he has a pop, he, he can score. Like, yeah. he's got it in his locker. Um, so, no, I was delighted to see his involvement and for him to get a goal. Because I've been saying all season, since that Preston game, he just looked like the source we needed. <laughs> um, he's very similar to Halilovic, just probably a bit quicker, actually. A bit quicker, but I wouldn't say as technically gifted as Halilovic no, is. No. So um, they, 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 could, they could kind of support each other in different roles. And I think they both offer different things but if I, I personally want to see him in a more central role because his work rate is also good however touching on Simmons yeah um I thought he was fantastic particularly in the first half um and like you say um Boya does have the knack of bringing in young players and selling okay. them on for big money yeah and that might actually be something Dong likes about him because we all know Dong likes to bring through talent and sell them on for uh, like triple their worth so you know it's um is, it is what it is but he is that sort of manager and he actually particularly liked to do it with strikers more recently uh Carlin Grant um who went obviously went to Huddersfield then went to West Brom um but it's actually a longer list than people realize I saw it the other day um I think he's made something like I think it's something like 30 million in selling young players. Okay. Um, while he was at Charlton. <laughs> so it's definitely in his locker to breed in young players and sell them on. So yeah. you could see the likes of Seddon brought into the team. And if they really relish the opportunity, they may go on to bigger things. Because I think he's been really unfortunate, Steve Seddon. Yeah, like, possibly. He deserved first team football a lot longer. A, a lot longer time ago than he's been given, I suppose. And you see what he does in League One. He sparkles. Every team he's been on loan to, they've had nothing but praise for him. Yeah. And he's got the numbers to back it up as well. And I mean, I remember Brentford, first game of the season, last season, I thought he was fantastic, especially for obviously the cross he put in for Pedersen's thunder header that <laughs> still baffles me to this day that it even hit the net. But... <laughs> Here we are. No, he's, he's definitely got it in his lock. He may not be as good defensively as Pedersen is, but he certainly has a more, I'd, I'd say, more in his locker going forward because Pedersen tries a bit too hard to be Neymar down the wing sometimes. Um, but Seddon would definitely be more uh, more the type to be an attacking fullback if that's what Boya wants. Yeah. But yeah, no, definitely some standouts there, as uh, Carl mentioned, and I completely agree. I think with me, with, with Seddon, I think there's one of the reasons he's been unlucky. Um, Pedersen, for, for an extended period of time, and I went through a bit of a patch, I think it was when Watford were, were sniffing around him up until that point, he was exceptional. Um, but I have always said, and I have the same probably old man moan about Sanchez, is that players that are just, just so just massively one-footed yeah. in this day and age. I, I just don't see it. I, I just think you've got to be able to, I'm not saying you could, you know, if you're left footed, you be, should be, be able to ride for one in top bins from 40 yards. But I think just getting yourself out of problems or being able to just give and go with your, with your wrong foot, if you like, that, that shouldn't be too much to ask. And I think that with, with Pedersen, you've got a fullback who is, who, who has been, he's been a great player for blues but I do think that Bowie will be looking for maybe a bit more than a, a one-dimensional player. And I think Seddon gives us that. Yeah. Having said that, I, one of the reasons I don't think he's had, had a run is because Pedersen gives us some stability in a defence that's been woeful. Mm -hmm. You take that out and put a kid in, all of a sudden you've got dodgy centre-halves, an exposed fullback, and Colin, who, you know, has found it difficult from time to time because I don't think he's ever had a partner in front of him that he can rely on. And somebody that's just focused on going forward. So I think there's a lot to it. I think Seddon gets a chance if if Boria starts to commit to a centre-half uh, partnership. I think that's where he's got his chance to get in. And I guess time will, will tell on that one. Um, I think the other player that wasn't necessarily... I, I don't know whether he was involved in the 23s. So I, don't, I don't think he was. 
but there were signs that Leco is definitely in the in the manager's thoughts. Oh, definitely, he will be definitely, definitely more be. so yeah. than Branka. And and I think that throws up. Um, there's a lot of questions, <clears throat> and it will be, <clears throat> excuse me, and just leading on to I guess to the next point of discussion. There's there's going to be a lot of you know we've talked about quite a lot of players there, and I think we were probably to a man happy with with how the first two games went, albeit you know one one result probably flattered the opposition a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's it, it's been four four two. He's been quite happy with it, I think. But now we've got this conundrum and he's had 10 days of, right, what are you doing on the training pitch? So, Tom, sort of over to you. What, what have you thought about some of the comments that, that Lee's made over the last sort of week or so? Because I think it's been quite interesting with some of the stuff that he's come out with. I absolutely love his mentality. I think that's my favourite part <clears throat> about him since he's come into Blues. Because, um, you know, I think... Karanka, when you watch his interviews, it was always very what you'd expect. But um, Boyer's like, each and every game will set out to win. And you can see that in the lineup. Whereas Karanka might say that and you'd see five at the back and we'll, we'll sit on it. Uh, Boyer, he's going for every game and he's he'll speak about it. And obviously, um, you know, he's not... I wouldn't say he was reserved as other managers are. I think he's quite open. And yeah. um, <clears throat> I remember watching an interview he did last last season when Charlton went down. It was away at Huddersfield. And he openly criticised them and said, uh, there's not one player in this squad that shouldn't be looking at themselves right now and really just re -evaluate. And he won't be afraid to pick people out. And I yeah. think that's what this squad needs. <clears throat> just someone to properly... Just, just be the be the main voice and let them know where they stand and what they should be doing. So, um, no, that's good. But overall, his, his comments, um, <clears throat> me personally, I was, I was happy with it. It was a short press conference, actually, compared to the usual ones. Only four minutes, I think. So I was a bit sad in that sense. But uh, what was covered was <clears throat> good stuff. So, um, yeah. no, I'm definitely excited about the lineup he'll go with because I do think this time it will be different to our last couple of games, but not massively different, just yeah. one or two players that he might want to try out in the first team, whether they impressed in the under-23s or in training. We yeah. sort of see, but Lico could be one of those players. So, um, yeah, no, it's def definitely interesting going into the next game. And, Carl, it, it, I mean, yeah, obviously the, the four minutes on with you, mate, you, you probably... <sighs> I suppose people have been bereft of sense for so long. You just, yeah. you just wanted, you know, the manager is... is you know, I don't think he's put a foot wrong so far in, in front of the in front of the press, uh, as you say, talk t total sense. But Carl, did you pick up on some of the things he was just talking about? You know, his shape and you know what they've been working on, and I think it was quite a broad church that that he'd been working on. What what did you take from that? I, I think one of his, I mean, the most interesting comment I think for me was that he said, you know, if you look at the the training videos from when he started to now, bear in mind that was what two weeks ago. He said, you can already see the difference, which I think that is massive. You yeah. know, uh, I mean, of course, every manager is going to come in and blow his own trumpet a little bit, you know, but um, <sighs> that, that stood out as huge because that, along with when you think about some of the player comments we've heard, obviously Harley being the biggest one, but I think Mark Roberts gave an interview the other day as well yeah. um, to talk sport. And to hear that after two weeks shows that there's obviously been a lot of work, but there's a lot of things that needed working on. And then he literally just lifted through every listed everything he's worked on and it's like isn't that not what they were already working on like it yeah. does make you wonder what they were doing yeah it definitely uh, raises the question doesn't yeah, it <laughs> absolutely and I think for me that I think the, the best part the, the second best part of that was when he mentioned that they've been working on you know being clinical taking their chances uh, and just shooting as well which I think we we probably all agree needs a little as bit basic as it sounds it needs yeah. to be done <laughs> but but that's what it seems to be it seems to be that you literally just got them back to playing Football, like basic, yeah. no nonsense football, and like we said before, that's what we need to do to survive in this league. We don't need, yes, everyone loves a fancy one-two touch or a good little freaking step over every now and then, but we need basic football. We need to just play basic football and win games. And I think he's really highlighted that is what he is yeah. trying to instill in them. Um, and then, like, like, like Tom said, the mentality of it as well. Again, he was asked, you know, how do you go into this Swansea game to win it? Yeah. You know, under Karanka, that would never have been the answer. We all know that. So, yeah, I think I think there's a lot there that is really positive. And if it's just basic football that keeps us up, then it's basic football, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, 
Yeah. As long as we stay up, yeah. And yeah. I, I, just going back to just one one step with, with McGree in that 23s game, it did remind me a little bit of, of Craig Gardner, the strike. Mm. Um, <clears throat> he scored a very similar goal. I can't remember who it was against, but... And I think with McGree, just talking about shooting from outside the box, when he was in in Australia and, and the way his reputation has been very much shoot on sight, and he did score a lot of goals from, from, from range. And then I think if we look back at this season, apart from Terrell, when he picked up those couple, and you know, Sanchez, Sanchez's brilliant goal, that was still amazing run, and he was sort of... And obviously, Halalovic scored that wonder goal. But outside of that, it's been, you know, lots of from corners and, and set pieces and crosses in. And Tom made a really good point a couple of pods ago about Karanka and how did Middlesbrough get promoted? Well, it wasn't by scoring a load of goals. It was, uh, but there was a lot of midfielders that chipped in. And I think that has got to be part of what Bowie is going to be thinking is, Yes, we need to get balls into Djokovic, but people have got to step up. You know, Bella needs, if he's going to play, needs to score more goals. I think they all do. Yeah. And yeah. You know, if you look at the show reel of uh, Raheem Harper on YouTube, he's not shy. He scored some really good goals from range. We know Gary Gardner can as well. So, my my biggest takeout, Carl, as you said, was focusing on that finishing because in the Watford game, okay, there wasn't many apart from maybe Hogan's, you know, head of the head of his shoulder. There wasn't many absolute cast iron chances, but there was enough that if you got a little bit about you and you got confidence, Watford would have scored, I reckon, one or two of the chances that we had, but we obviously we're not in the place that they're in. So we did for me, I think that is number one, and you highlighted and you you bang on. I think the other thing is and we did say after the Watford game, we're all shitting ourselves when there's a dead ball. But anything yeah. in the back of the box, whether it's a corner, whether it's, uh, you know, something just outside the box, it just looks panic. Um, I think they'll have covered that, definitely. Oh, yeah, with, with, with Has to be at the, the, the top of the list. Yeah. So, and I think, I mean, I know it's basic. It, it's <clears throat> try and score goals and don't let them in. But <clears throat> it, it, it's one say saying it and, and another thing doing it. And, yeah. you know, I, I've just got my, my summary of, of Bowyer is just common sense. And that's at a premium, whether it's in football or any walk of life. It, you know, people don't have it. They overcomplicate things. And I, Tom, as you say, I, I think this is about it's about survival now. But I do yeah. think that we've got and there were, again, patches in the Watford game. We played some good stuff. You know, it doesn't have to be just smash it up to Djokovic. And Bowyer, for me, certainly wasn't a player like that. Without he, he wasn't just as long as they give it their all, really, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, precisely that. And, and you know, are they? Sure there's obviously uh, Cole. You mentioned that um, uh, Roberts has come out, and you know, he's, he's had he's had a bit, bit, bit to say, and, and so is the the captain. Um, I, I am going to take this first up because <laughs> the, the, again the shit housery theme that that continues for on many different fronts when he was talking about the celebration and he he was sort of like yeah i wasn't really thinking about it we just had a chat and and he's like oh yeah I've, i'll do that after i score which i've got as total bollocks uh, to be honest i think that was absolutely a statement that he wanted to make and if he thinks as he said that karanka would find that funny um yeah again <laughs> i struggle i really struggle with that but you know, I, I think that we've we've probably put quite a few demons away over the last sort of seven to ten days that had to be put away. Yeah. Um, and, and and Carl, did did you hear what what Dean had to say other than that around training and things? Um, not so much what Dean said. It was more I certainly caught a lot of the Roberts interview. Yeah. Um, and you know, he said, you know, it's just a completely different atmosphere. He said he's never been around a squad as together as this. Right. Um, I think that's for the whole season. I think, and I think we've got that. Although the results and the performances haven't been yeah. there, you do get that to get togetherness with certainly with with a large group. Of them. But he was saying that you know that the way that the manager's taken them through, like the shapes he wants them to be in, the the and basically the way he wants them to defend, and that it's a completely different. I, I think it's along the, again along the lines of what we've heard from a lot of them. You know, it, it's simple. It's it's not elegant. It's just simple stuff, and it's a clear plan that 
Boja has on how he wants them to perform, yeah. which speaks words to the fact that basically they're always getting confusing messages. I, yeah. I would assume yeah. that's the only takeaway you can have from that. Yeah. Um, but I, I would think, I mean, like I said, I didn't really catch Dean's comments other than the, uh, the shithousery about the celebration. But, um, but yeah, like I, I think it'd probably be very similar, I would guess. And, and it's, I think it's great that although there might be a bit of kind of party line there, it's all very similar. Like you haven't heard any opposing comments come out of that camp at all since Bo's yeah. gone and it's all been straight line. This is how it is kind of thing, which I like. No, hundred percent. And, and Tom, did, did you did you hear any of, of Dean and what he was saying? Or yeah, um, I I read the article about his interview. Um, I read the what the Daily Mail had wrote about it um, and stuff. And I think I think he needed to come out because obviously it was still being brought up. I'm surprised it's taken this long for him to do an interview about it. But it's it might might just be the best time because it's kind of gone a bit more quiet now. So it might yeah. people might not take as much notice. But he has just kind of I don't know, just said said what a professional would say. Yeah. Um not not criticizing anybody openly. But I think we all know it's it's a bit, I don't know. Yeah, I think you can tell it's a bit bullshit but I think he knows that himself and he knows that the people that will read and most blues fans that read that article are going to go like yeah bullshit but <laughs> we'll, we'll laugh it off like it's um it's just something you can laugh about um but I do think that that celebration still was a, a statement on how he was clearly I wouldn't say he was viewed massively negatively but obviously they didn't appreciate how he probably conducted himself when defending the players in interviews because yeah. he didn't really defend them at all. Yeah. Um, so, and I, it was clearly just showing, look, we can do it. And, you know, the, the, that was clearly the gesture yeah. that was um, coming across. But no, it was, it was, it was what you'd expect. It was very just professionalism, not giving anything away and just trying to be as nice as possible. But I think we all know it's probably a different story, realistically. Yeah. Um, and as for the Roberts interview, uh, yeah, no, that's it was great to hear uh, Mark Roberts being so positive. And that's, that's good because I've always said he's such a confidence player. And if Mark Roberts has confidence on his day, he can be a brilliant central defender. Um, so no, hopefully we see more of that. And you know, you think about his time at Blues, the best managerial kind of, I suppose, spell he's been under would be Gary Monk, and he barely got a look in. Um, yeah. because if you're talking about kind of squad harmony, that'd probably be where you had to go. Um, but obviously, we spoke to Viv Solomon Ottaball the other day, and the that Gary Monk squad harmony wasn't so great for him. Um, so, you know, it's, yeah, I think it's refreshing to see that everybody's happy. And I have watched those training videos and it's, it's a great watch. But funnily enough, just before we move on quickly, I know you mentioned Karanka earlier, my, the Middlesbrough comments on how on earth did they get promoted. I was thinking about back to April 2016, the season they got promoted when we played them at St. Andrews. 2-2 draw, great game. But they're, both their goals came from goalkeeping individual errors. Like that, that, that was, that was it. They were both tappings. One was Jordan Rhodes tapping. The other one was a Ramirez tapping and our goals were absolute beauties. So if we can kind of reverse, reverse the, those roles again and get us being kind of that clinical, but even then, I think that just shows that it was even that Middlesbrough side that went up, it was never quality. Like it, yeah. it just never was. Yeah. Um. So no, there's definitely a difference in this current blues uh, squad coming up. So yeah. exciting times. Indeed, and I think the, the one thing that was uh, probably a little bit of a veiled um, swipe at the at the at Karanka from Dean, just talking about just just from from shape, just you know, constantly you're very much off the ball and keeping shape, and what we're doing at, at dead balls, and he and he sort of said, yeah, don't really know why we we weren't doing this before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but. <clears throat> you know, and again, Colin, I think there we, we're still in this honeymoon period. But as we move on to on to Swansea, which you know we probably as better time now to do that as any. That I I think after this game, the honeymoon period probably is over. And the reason I say that is because time is running out. We've got eight games left. He's had he's had time to learn. He's had two games. Okay, it's not he hasn't had a preseason. He hasn't had you know. But now he's had two games. 
He's got three points. He's had seven to ten days to work with the squad. And I think now he will be a hell of a lot more um, confident in the players that he's picking and knowing what he's got than he would have been before because he would have just been relying on, you know, I guess um, Craig Gardner's inputs yeah. and watching back from, from games. And that, as we all know, that doesn't really tell a story. You can People can look like they're shining when they're on the TV, but actually when you're watching it at St Andrews, they might not be doing a whole heap off the ball and all the, all the other stuff. So, Carl, what's... Where, where do you think he's going to go with this team? And the other, sorry, the, the other thing that Dean mentioned, and I've said it, and that's probably the first time we'll ever agree on anything. Is, um, <laughs> this is killing you, isn't it? Uh, well, I will, I will come on to it. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that Dean made the point that we were changing our approach based on what the opposition do. And that was Karanka, top to bottom. Yeah. And I do not believe for one minute, though, he's going to do that. He's going to be, no. on. This is, where are our strengths? What are we good at? I don't give a fuck who we're playing. We're not digging off the path. Because if we lose, then there's no excuses because we failed against sort of really playing to our strengths rather than getting preoccupied with the likes of Swansea that, you know, renowned for knocking it around. You know, they play good football. So, Cole, what, what do you think? Just, just to, I guess, who do you think he's going to put in? I think, he's, you know, that's as good a question as any. Yeah, it's a million dollar question. I wouldn't be surprised to see Lecco get a chance. I really wouldn't. And especially if um, obviously Hogan has a knock um, and obviously Sanchez is out, I would, wouldn't be surprised to see Lo, uh, Lecco, not Logan, yeah. um, Lecco start up front with um, with Duke, to be honest. Because um, it's a very similar dynamic in that, you know, you're not missing away from what he's already been working on. Yes. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I would probably expect Halilovic to continue on the right because I think he's been solid. Yeah. He's done a really good job. I, yeah. I think that's possibly going to be the only real change unless anyone has really gone out of their way over the last 10 days and shown that they should be the start. I think he'll probably be looking to go with a similar. I, it wouldn't surprise me to not deviate from the 4-4-2 or even the 4-3-1-2, I think it was. We played at Watford at, at one point. Um, I think it will be a very, like one of those two he'll go with. But I think you'll probably see the bulk of the 11 purely because I think he has developed a quick trust for that 11. Yeah. And like you say, he's not going to, you know, Swansea have, have got potentially a few decent players out, which, you know, <laughs> come on, let's, let's hope it stays that, that fucking yeah. way to be honest. Um, but like, I think it, you very much, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head, um, John, he's literally, this is us. This is how we're playing. We don't give a fuck what they're doing. We don't care who they are. We don't care how they're setting up. This is my system. This is how we're playing. Yeah. And if he needs to sort of, as he did with Watford, if he needs to change it on the fly, he will. Yeah. You know, um, but he won't play to, to the way that uh, Swansea want to play. He'll want to play the way he plays. And especially as we're at home as well, you know, and he said he wants teams to come to St. Andrews and not leave with anything. So yeah. I think it'll be, it'll probably be the 11 with maybe Hogan being changed out potentially. Um, and yeah, and I think he'll just, so up to to either not let Swansea leave, or if they do leave with even a point, to make sure they fucking know they've been in a game again, like Reading did. Yeah, and I think Watford did as well to for a large part of their game. Definitely. Um, but that's my feelings on it anyway. And just just outside of that, is there any from a personal point of view? Would you? Is there anybody that you'd like to to see have a run that probably won't happen, but just really from a from a personal perspective? Yeah, kind of from the twenty three is definitely seven. I do like McGree, but I think. He's probably going to go with trust, which is why I think Seddon won't get in. But I'd yeah. love to see Seds given a chance just because he deserves it. You know, and like, like Tom said, he's proved his point that every team has been on, you know, I mean, to the point where I think Pompey were back in for him over January. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got to give him the time, otherwise, he's going to walk. You know, players want to play football. Um, unless you're going to Man City to sit on the bench for four years, you know, you, you, you don't want to play, you don't want to sit on the bench. You know, you want to be out there playing. And I think I'd love to see Seds given the chance because I just think it just gives us a different dynamic. Yeah. Um, he would probably be my, I guess, dream pick for, for, this, yeah. for this evening's game. Um, but I mean, with what's come out, I would almost be happy to see anyone in that starting 11, uh, with the exception of probably San Jose and Adam Clayton, to be honest. Um, they can stay away if they want. But the rest of them, I, I've got a bit of belief in, in almost any of them, to be honest. I think yeah. they can all do a job and I think they will for Boya. And yeah. that, you know, the players that have come out and spoken about it, you can really feel that. So. Yeah, I, I think it's a great shout. 
Tom, sort of same question. Do you, do you think he'll change it up? Who do you think he'll bring in? And and I like that. Who's your dream pick? Yeah, oh, I think. I like to be honest, dream pick. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, mate, I was just I was just thinking to myself, if he wants to send the right message to the squad, at least one of those players will make it into the starting eleven. Um, and if not, so quite a few of them on the bench. Yeah, because uh, they need to be the the squad need to be shown that there is hope for anyone who wants to play in this first team, that there is a chance they'll get in there if they put the work in. So I think players that particularly performed well in that 23s game need to be in and around the squad, whether that's on the bench and come off the bench during the game or whether that's even in the starting 11. Maybe the starting 11 is a bit too much of a jump yet, um, but I don't think it would be personally, for someone like Steve Seddon, who I think would relish the opportunity, um, or even Riley McGree. Because um, the problem is with McGree, he's a bit like Terrell sometimes. Uh, on his day, he'll be fantastic, um, but he can fade out in games and you start to be like, where's he gone sort of thing. Um, so McGree personally might be a good off the bench player that could really have an impact on a game, even if we're winning, you know, just to try and keep on the pressure. You know, if you keep the ball, you're not going to concede. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So um, no, I, I, I would have said Seddon, but I, I'll try and <laughs> uh, I, I won't copy as much. Um, I'd actually go with Simmons. Uh, actually, wow. I, and that's that's what I mean by kind of. I think of, that's in the fanciful pick realm. Not <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I think he's that he's that player that I mean by you know put on the bench and then brought on yeah. for not just the last five minutes. I I'd like to see at least a good fifteen minutes from the lad to be honest. And if Scott Hogan's injured, like why the fuck not? Just chuck him in the side. Yeah. I, I don't think we've got much to lose. Um, if we did, it's it'd be a good. I suppose, judge of whether he would relish the opportunity or not and see what we're properly dealing with and whether he's got kind of the physical ability to play in the championship. Yeah. Um, and for me, it'd be a risk worth taking because um, if you put Cosgrove up top with him, our only other kind of official striker, it's too big, man. It doesn't really work no. as well. And I wouldn't be against Cosgrove and Juki being up top if it was going to work and they had the right game plan. Because I want to see as much of Cosgrove as possible because I don't think we've seen anywhere near enough no, yet. we absolutely haven't. Exactly. And, you know, it was said when he joined Blues, um, a lot of people who did analysis on him, it would take time for him to properly blend in the squad. But as soon as he was in the goals, they would just flow. Um, so if we can get to that stage before the end of the season, then great. You know, we can build on that for next season. <clears throat> but no, I think for me it'd be Simmons, but I wouldn't mind seeing Cosgrove starting either. So yeah. um, we'll see. Yeah. I, I mean, my, I, I think that it, the changes are going to be quite, he's, he's going to limit himself. And I don't mean in a negative way, because, you know, he, I, I, I think that it will be 4 4 2. I think that's his sort of default, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, much rather have something that a manager commits to than the the madness that we had for the majority of the season, where nobody knew. And I think I'd probably put Karanka in that bracket. I don't think he fucking <laughs> doing. Um, so with a four four two, I mean, uh, it's it's difficult. It's it's really difficult because I think all the players that have started those two games across the two games have actually brought something to the party. So. Has anybody from that, that under 23s or indeed, you know, a training that we obviously we're not privy to, we haven't seen that, have done enough to break into it? I'm not sure. Word, word on the street up until, you know, when Halalovic signed for us, probably not the best trainer in the world. Um, you know, if he was, then he, he probably wouldn't be with us. Um, so whether he's really got his head down and grafted, I'd be gutted if he's not in the team because I think you have to have somebody that's got just something that nobody else, and I'll probably put all the Swansea players in that bracket as well. You know, that, that kid has got just something that, you know, it's God given, you know, and, and we, we do need that. You can't just have the same sort of workman like players. So I think Lecco for me is the one that would come in just purely on what I've seen from the way that Bowyer is with him. It's just, where does he play? And I'm probably with you, Carl, because 
Hogan the last game, he's got a knock. I didn't think he had his best game, um, but he's, he is our best goal scorer. So I think if Hogan's fit and he's been training well, it's a brave move to drop him for Lecco that, you know, let's be honest, he hasn't exactly looked deadly in front of goal, has he? So, no. no. So, but it wouldn't surprise me to see him in the side. I think, you know, he, maybe he goes wide at the expense of Bella, potentially. But then if you take your crossing option out, is he as good as Bella crossing the ball? I, I probably doubt that. And then with Lilovic, he's not going to get wide because if he plays on the right, he's going to cut in. Does that limit what Duke is going to do? So there's so many fucking questions that, you know, I, I, I the rebirth of Djukovic has been the big thing, I think, with, with Boja. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you're going to continue, you've got to commit to giving him the ammunition to do what he's good at. And Bowie is he's no mug and he, you know, if Dukey plays, he will get the service there. And I think that probably dictates who plays. Bowie got the best out of Lecco when he was playing up front at Charlton. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I I think the only position for me, or I reckon two positions that are probably up for grabs, is the Hogan position. And I think that could be one of a lot. You could have a, a McGree in there, which I definitely wouldn't be averse to, just dropping off a little bit. I'd love to see that personally. It's a little bit of a different 4-4-2 dynamic. If you've got Lecco, I think he would be a threat without a doubt. Um, then there's there's lots of other things to to consider. Cosgrove ain't going to happen. I just can't see that because it doesn't make any sense. It, not with Djukovic. It just it doesn't work. So if I was going to put any money on it, if Hogan's not fit, then I do think Lecco will come in. And I wouldn't surprise me if Seddon comes in. I mean, I know it's your dream pick, Carl, but I wouldn't. It, it wouldn't surprise me because the kid has definitely got something, and, and what he has got is two feet, and Pedersen hasn't. Yeah. Pedersen um, had a rusty last game as well. He wasn't yeah, too. Yeah, great. he played a lot of football, and he's he's been great. You know that first game, for, and Bowie won't forget that he, the first game, um, the Reading he was unbelievable, and you know he's had ten days rest, so who knows? You know he might be back in the same frame of mind. Dream pick. Um, I, you can't I don't, say Helilovic. I don't sound like a shit now, so I'm not going to say it. But um, I, I know that he will stick with Roberts and Dean. I'm still massively, massively worried about that. Massively worried about that. And I, 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 I just hope I'm proven wrong over the next eight games. But for me, I've said it for a long, a long, long time. They haven't been good enough for season after season after season. So unless Bowie has done some unbelievable work in the last sort of 10 days and he can continue that, I think we're going to get burnt again. I hope it's not tonight. I hope it's not. I hope it's next season. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, for, for me, I'd, I'd like I'd, I'd put Jake Clark Salter in the back line um, and take one of the two out either or. Um, I, don't think, I don't think he can take Dean out just because of, you know, he, he has, yeah, he, He's the captain, blah, blah, blah. Um, in an ideal world, I would bomb him out, but that's me. Um, Roberts, potentially, I, I would. I know he scored a goal and everything else, but I just think it's that ball at feet, pressure on, shit yourself. I just have nightmares about it. But, yeah. you know, again, I don't want to be negative. That's just my my personal point of view. I don't think any, like I said, any of the players that have played in the last two games warrant any major criticism. They've all, they've all done their bit. Um, but like I said, I do think today's that's this is the time where the honeymoon period is over. Because if we lose seven games, need three wins, that's championship form, not relegation form. Um, you know, so we, we've got to be on our metal. And I've no, I'm no doubt that they will, it will be blood and thunder. Absolutely no doubt. I'm not expecting anything other than fucking carnage first 10. And I, and I can't wait. I cannot wait for it. <laughs> you know, they will be, I mean, he will literally have them like chomping at the bit to get at them and um we haven't seen that for crikey so long so long and um you know that's what we want to see but controlled aggression i've loved the harper and garner dynamic i wouldn't change that i think that's got a lot to offer um and and i'm with you tom i, I i'd love to see sims and i suppose the the other point that i would make is we just need to make sure we've got a, a bit of a balanced bench because we've now got so many people vying for positions you know, if Seddon comes in, there's no, in my view, there's no point having Pedersen, um, 
friends on the bench, the two, two, two together. I, I just don't see the point. You know, we just got to make sure that to get a Simmons on the bench, which I think totally with you, mate, got to have him. You got to have a Simmons, you got to have a Cosgrove, um, without a doubt, because then, you know, let, let's see what they've got. Um, and obviously Sanchez will probably be on there as well, unless he's done something over the last sort of seven, 10 days. So yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. It's not like a Karanka bingo scenario, but yeah, I, I think there, there could be a few surprises and we'll just have to wait and see what they are. So I guess wrapping up predictions, uh, Tom, I'll start with you. What, what, what do you think? Um, I've, I've said this a couple of times. Uh, I feel like my, my heart is three, one blues and yeah. my, my head is one, one. And, you know, I don't think either side wants a draw realistically. No. However, we'd probably be more benefit. We'd probably benefit more from a draw than Swansea would because they might see it as a, a, a three points they should get if you look at the table. Yeah, um, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do think this is a reform blue side, and it will certainly be a reform blue side at St Andrews because I think that's one of Bowyer's key jobs at the moment he's really focusing on getting that home form back to the standard it should be yeah. um so i think you'll definitely see us more motivated at home than you probably will away for the rest of the season i reckon yeah. um so no if we can definitely get in their face i think we can make swansea panic and it, we could actually put quite a few past them if if everyone is on the ball like on on their a game I, yeah. I do think we could put a few past them because they've got some massive injuries in that Swansea squad. Um, you know, they've got Mark Gahey, uh, who's been probably their best central defender all season, yeah. who's injured. Uh, Connor Hurahan, who has been a part of the Swansea resurgence since they signed him. However, they have dipped in form recently, but he's still been quality and I'm sure he'd love to score against Blues. So uh, glad that he's not in the squad um, or he, he might be, but he is... He is supposed to be injured. But Andre Ayew is the biggest one. That is huge because he is not, he's not only, you know, their goal scorer, he's, he's the leader in that squad. He's their captain. So, um, yeah, it's, it's if they're missing Ayew, I do think we really do stand a good chance. And if we don't, if we don't give them clear cut opportunities and we force them to shoot from range, so long as it's not players like Hurahan, um, I think we could really win that game because they don't have natural strikers. Yeah. They don't. Um, they, they play wide men up front. So um, if we force them into an uncomfortable situation of having to shoot from range, I think I'd prefer that because they're, they're only scoring clear-cut chances and they don't score much either, Swansea. They're a very defensive side and of late they've been leaking goals. So overall, this is probably the best time to play Swansea bar maybe the fact that they'll be a bit more up for it because they lost to Cardiff, obviously. So um, they might have a bit of fire in their belly, but I think Blues will have more. So I drop 2-1, two 2-1 one. Two one okay. Blues. There we are. I said it. It's doing. Cole? Yeah, can't kind of uh, agree with everything Tom said. There. I think if, if they have got are you out, pff, fucking brilliant from our perspective, to be honest. Yeah. I think I think their form is it. I think I probably would have preferred to play them before the break than, than after. Mm. Um but yeah, I think it purely depends which blues turn up, doesn't it? As ever, with blues, yeah. it just depends what fucking mood they're in. Uh, I think, obviously, again, my heart says win, my head says draw. I'm gonna go for a draw. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for a high scoring draw. And I'm gonna go for three all. I reckon. Wow. Because it's I think the a quid on that, son. Yeah. So long as it's three nil Swansea at half it's time. Crazy. Yeah, and then we've exactly. Got three that. in the second half. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I think that. Blues players will be desperate to prove point and yeah. to prove to Boya. You know, like you said, I think the honeymoon period is might even be over before the game. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I just think everyone's got a point to prove. Swansea won't want to, you know, go down without a fight or, or take a point unless they've had to really fight for it. So yeah, I'm going to go three all. I, I don't know. I just yeah, we haven't well, really I, been in I, like I, a. I, I'm, I am actually going to have a pound on that. Yeah, I, I think I will as well. To be honest, why not? Um, that'll be hundreds of one. But yeah, no, that that's what I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a three all draw, but obviously. A Blues win would be the dream, but um, yeah, three all. Yeah, I, I think for me, um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to take it on face value, everything that's been coming out of the, of the club. I think the one thing they definitely will have been focused on is shape and dead balls. 
because uh, other than that, we haven't really taken Watford out to a, to a degree. The only, the only time we really look shaky is at dead balls. And if he irons that out, I think he's going to be absolutely gagging for a clean sheet. I think that, again, I think he... If there was going to be a draw, I think the best draw for us would be nil-nil because it will have demonstrated that we can actually, you know, keep out what is a decent side. So what I'm, I'm going to say that I, I am going to say that that they have worked on it. They're confident with what they're doing. They know what they're doing. We've got a lot of commanding players there. They just need to be in the right place. I'm going to get two nil Blues. I, I I think that, and that's purely on. Probably I've been sold the dream, and that ain't the first time we blues. Um, and, and I'm taking it that you know they are they are committed to the cause and everything they're working on. They they know what they're doing. So uh, yeah, I am I am genuinely confident today. Um, there's there there've been enough signs, and I, I believe in the manager. And um, what a three points it would be, Christ! I mean, if if Good Friday w- was going to be messy anyway, if we win tonight, I fucking don't know what Saturday's going to look like. <laughs> Um, bad Saturday, I think it'll be for me if we win. Um, but yeah, so anyway, we're back to it. So, guys, thanks a lot. Really enjoyed getting back involved again. Um, we've got a bit of a hectic yeah. calendar going forward, so yeah, we'll have lots to talk about. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, Lee can, can get a result for us. So, Carl, thanks a lot for your contributions, mate. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. And let's hope it's a, a positive one the next time we chat, indeed. And if it's 3 3. Yeah, fair play. I'll buy you a beer when I can. <laughs> um, you, Rob, thanks a lot, buddy. Good to see you as ever. Cheers. No worries, mate. Cool. Well, that's it then. That's uh, another a podcast done. Uh, really looking forward to the game. Uh, still, I think we are just about that, that honeymoon period is coming over. So the hard work starts here and let's hope we can get a, get a result. So hope you all enjoy the game. We'll be back to give a review of that and obviously preview for uh, next, the games after that. Uh, but for now, uh, stay safe and keep right on. Thank <laughs> you.